over. And uh, we start at, two, at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. with worship and all the good stuff. Time of uh, prophecies and uh, word sharing and prayer and testimony and so on. I can't believe that we're at the end of 2017 already. It's like, it's like you just went to sleep and you wake up and one year is gone. I know. All right? And so we praise the Lord and we thank him that he has kept us alive. Amen? He has done good thing unto us. Praise the Lord, somebody. God has been such a blessing. He has sustained us by his grace and by his power. And we are so thankful. Praise the Lord. And uh, tonight we're going to cross on the other side of 2018. My God. Years ago, 2000, 2018 or 17 looked so far away. But we're in 2018. The computer did not stop in 2000. They are still working. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think everybody is happy. I have a very strong word in my spirit for this uh, year coming uh, to just encourage you. Encourage you. Every year is a year of opportunity because tomorrow is an opportunity. Tomorrow has not happened yet as far as we are concerned. But as far as God is concerned, tomorrow had happened already because he knows the end from the beginning. Praise God. So we are looking forward to 2018, but God knows already. Praise God. And so I just want to encourage you. Any burden, any carry over, leave it at the altar. So you can enter 2018 light. No luggages, no baggages, no carry over. Somebody say, don't bring anything from the past. No carry over, all right? So we can just come in light and say, Lord, here I am. Fresh, new, ready for 2018. Work through me. Build me through. Do whatever he pleases you. I am willing. Praise the Lord. So we can give our best in 2018. Things are picking up really quickly. And we know great things are awaiting us as a church and as families. I am believing that for all of you because I believe it for myself. Amen. 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 This morning I would like to speak on the subject of grace, grace unto it. Again, as we started last week, I would like just to mention my goal here. It is to bring a clear understanding about the subject of grace. As I spoke to you last Sunday, there's a lot of confusion. I don't know. We are human beings, so we like extremes. You know, uh, on one side, some people think grace is a license to sin. So I do whatever I want. God is there. Praise the Lord for his grace. On the other end, we have a legalistic perspective where you have to do everything and prove something. You see, that's not what God intended. God gave us grace, and I give you a simple definition of grace. It is the power of God to do His will. Somebody say, the power of God to do His will. Praise God. And in this year coming, we're going to begin to tackle it down very beautifully and show you the virtues of grace why grace came, what grace is able to do for you and I. Praise God. And so I would like we read in this beautiful verse in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Zechariah 4, 6 to 7. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Can we say together, not by might, not by power? Let's say together, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There's a lot of things God does in your life and it's not a matter of might or power. But His spirit. Who art thou? Verse 7. O great mountain, 
before Zerubbabel that shall become a plain. And it shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Grace, grace unto it. Last Sunday I gave you a brief setting. The children of Israel just came back from Babylon. 70 years spent there. A new generation is rising up. God is taking them out of the place of confinement and slavery. Bring them back home to rebuild the walls and rebuild the temple. They came really excited, on fire, if I can say it. And they begin to lay down the foundation of the temple with such a joy, such a passion. The women were involved, the children were involved, the men were involved. It was a revival. It was a time of thanksgiving. Say, wow, thank God. Our forefathers died in Babylon, but here we are here, rebuilding the temple for our God. We're back to our land. It's a time of glorious worship. They lay down the foundations, the altar is built, and the enemy begin to attack. They get discouraged. You know, the enemy likes to attack when you are doing something that is valuable in the eyes of God. Yeah. Never get in a place where you feel like, because I'm doing God's work and God's will, I will never have any opposition. Wrong. You will have opposition. Jesus says, Satan is coming, but he has nothing on me. Paul had opposition. Jesus had opposition. Everybody, Abraham had a opposition. If you serve God, you will have opposition. There will be a great mountain somewhere, some out before you to prevent you to finish what you started, to prevent you to fulfill destiny and purpose. Opposition is part of life. Paul said, great doors of opportunity has been opened for me, but I have an opposition. So a great door of opportunity does not come only with glory. It brings also opposition. David, when the Philistines heard that David has been anointed king over Israel and Judah, they came to attack. As long as he was not anointed, nobody bugged him. But once they heard that the oil had fallen on the head of David, they feel like, ah, uh ah. -uh. The oil or the anointing is to empower you to do God's will. Favor, anointing, grace have the same root word. So when God has his hand on you, there will be a mountain before you. Praise God. But the word of the Lord come and said, Who art thou, great mountain? I like when God begins to speak to your problems. Yes. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Sometimes God wants you to go quiet. Shh. Let me speak to this mountain. That's the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Who art thou? Great mountain. You see, God called things the way they are. When the Bible says somebody was poor, don't try to figure out how poor he was. He was really poor. When the Bible says one guy was rich, don't try to figure out how rich this guy was. He was loaded. He was really rich. So when the Bible says you great mountain, don't try to figure out this was really a great mountain. And we are faced sometimes with great mountains. You see, mountains are struggles that are established in one life to prevent you to move forward. Right. Hallelujah. Who are thou? He asked him a question. What will your mountain answer if the Spirit of God asks your mountain? Who are thou, great mountain? What will he answer? Some will say, I am a mountain of financial struggle. Some will say, I'm a mountain of sickness and disease. Some will say, I'm a mountain of unemployment. Some will say, I'm a mountain of fears and anxiety. Some will say, I'm a mountain of intimidation. You understand that? So who art thou, great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You see, God did not wait for the mountain to say his name. He spoke right away, said, today, 
you will become a plain before him. In other words, we will not turn around the mountain. We will not figure out a way to climb you. Because you're going to flat down right now and you're going to become a highway before us. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> God wants to save you time so you do not turn around the mountain. The time is going to take you to turn around the mountain. God wants to save you that time so he just make it plain before you. Do you believe that? Yeah. He is able to do that. Who are thou? I want we finish this year and enter the new year with faith. Faith. Speak to this mountain. And tell the mountain, mountain, lift it up. Go into the sea. That's faith. Faith speaks. Faith is not silence. Faith believes. Faith speaks. And faith acts. Praise the Lord. In Exodus, the children of Israel are faced with a mountain. That mountain is the Red Sea. In fact, they are faced with two mountains, one in the front and one in the back. The first mountain is the Red Sea. The second mountain are the wild, crazy, violent chariot of the Egyptians. Yeah. Are you hearing me? You can go backward, you can go front. At least sometimes you can feel like I can go backward and run away a little bit. God said no running away. You run back, you're dying. You go forward, you're not advancing. And God spoke by the Spirit again. He said, today, this Egyptian, now he begins by the back, all right? This Egyptian that you see, that's mean what they turn to look, you will see no more. Tell the children of Israel, move forth. You see, faith speaks, faith believes, and faith acts. I yes. like in uh, Psalm 114, the Bible says, the Red Sea saw the people moving and flee. It was the moving of the people who walked by faith, who believed and acted, that made the Red Sea divided. It was not the stake of Moses. The Red Sea saw them. You see, God created all things and they respond to God's voice. Yeah. God speak to the Red Sea. God speak to the waters. God speak to mountains. God speak to the skies. They all have ear to hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah. So when they saw the people, they can even see. They saw the people moving, they, saw, they make a way. As long as the people just stagnated and stand, not moving forward, there will be no miracle. Sometimes God just wants you to act, open the word. Step out of the boat. Peter will never know he can walk on water. That is anointed to be a water walker. Until he step out. Praise the Lord. As long as we stay in the boat. Comfortable. Enjoying our comfort. Fearful. We want to get familiar with everything. Because we like to control. You want to know your environment so you're in charge. In this year coming as we are closing, I want to provoke you. Dare to believe. Dare to speak. And dare to act. Amen. Did you hear this? Yes. Dare. Somebody say dare. En français c'est ose. Dare to step out. Don't let people's opinion hold you back. I know everybody said nobody ever done that before. Guess what? The Bible does not give us any account of one man who walked on water before. Just be the one who will initiate and start it. Am I speaking to somebody? Yeah. There are dreams that are bestowed in your spirit, but you are afraid. One of the greatest mountains that men face is fear and anxiety. Yes, it is. You are afraid of failing. You are afraid of success. You are afraid you won't make it. You are afraid you will lose people. You are afraid people will mock you. You are afraid you are afraid you are afraid. That's a mountain. But in this season, no fear should hold you back. 
You need to step out boldly out of the boat. Let the other 11 sit back. But as far as you are concerned, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die trying to obey the voice of the Lord. He told me to come, I'm coming. I know I have no experience of walking on water. I've never done it before. I know I've never heard of anybody walking on water, so I have no reference. All that I have heard is a voice that says, come. Without explanation. The voice didn't say, come, it's going to be okay. And in case it doesn't work, I will always be. Don't you know I am God? Everything will be fine. That voice didn't say that. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. He said, come. And that was it. You know, Peter could say, okay. Let accelerate to move the boat forward him. No, no. Walk on water. I see you walking on water. I do what I see my father do. I'm going to walk on water right now. I'm about to step out. What about this business you've been sitting on? You've been planning and replanning and replanning and replanning and replanning and thinking and rethinking and rethinking. The reality is you are afraid. What about that project? Oh, I don't have money, that's why. No, no, that's an excuse. Fear always says you don't have enough. It is really fear speaking to you. Fear is saying you don't have enough. You are not qualified enough. You don't have enough support. You don't have the finances. That's the way fear, fear gives you an excuse not to do anything. What about that idea? In this new year, you have to be somebody else's solution. Are you getting me? Yeah. That business you're sitting on is not only for you. That project you're sitting on is not only for you. That ministry you're sitting on is not only for you. That book or journal or idea you're sitting on is not only for you. But fear has crippled you. And you don't even realize it's fear. You disqualify yourself in every way. You've been reporting this and reporting this and reporting it and reporting and reporting. The same way salvation is now, that project also is now, that vision also is now, that business is now, that ministry is now, it's not tomorrow, it's now. Hallelujah. Please, it's not money. Step out of the boat and see the money coming. Please, it's not a lack of patterns. Step out of the boat and see the patterns. It is fear. And I want we deal with it today. On this last day, I want we change our dressing. Every garment of fear and anxiety and worry and all this stuff that push you down and always give you an excuse not to step out in faith. We need to leave it in 2017. It can follow me. No carry over. Say no carry over. No carry over. No carry over. No carry over. Walk down great mountain before Zerubbabel. And God give the vision. He say, I see now. Zerubbabel now is running. Hallelujah. With the capstone crying out, grace, grace unto it. There are grace and there is grace available and much grace available to empower you to stand up, empower you to step out, empower you to run, empower you to achieve. It is available. You just need to receive it by faith. That's all. It is available. Grace is forever available. Grace is available. Jesus is grace. He is available. I want to provoke you. I feel like taking somebody in my hand and shake you. You understand? And say, come on, baby girl. Come on, man. Get something going. Grace is available. Grace is available. Grace is willing. Get something happening for Jesus. Time is passing and grace is available. Hallelujah. Grace is willing. Grace is available. Grace is here. Grace, grace to it. Amen. To that condition, grace is available. Yeah. That idea, grace is available. That plan, grace is available. That ministry, grace is available. That project, grace is available. That business, grace is available. Just receive grace, grace to it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Let's read uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 40. I, I, I feel like the rise of champions. People that they ride you off, but grace raise you up. Amen. And the child grew. This is Jesus. Hallelujah. Even when he was a child, he was phenomenal. <laughs> and the child grew and walked strong in spirit. Filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was opening. Now, for English-speaking people, you, you will help me out, right? Can we read that and stop at wisdom? Together. And the child grew, comma, and was strong in the spirit, comma, filled with? Wisdom. What is that following? No, 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 no. No, not the comma. The, the other two points. What does it mean? It means simply, what follow is the reason for which the other comes. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So we should be reading this way. And the child grew and walked strong in spirit, filled with spirit, because the grace of God was open to him. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the way it should be read, isn't it? Because the grace of God, when it's open to you, it makes you strong in spirit. So it's not the strong in spirit that receive grace. Grace is the one that makes you strong in spirit. So when you are weak in spirit, grace makes you strong in spirit. Do you see that? Strong in spirit does not attract grace. It is grace that makes you be strong in spirit. You know what it means to be strong in spirit? It means no matter how deep the valleys are and what the devil is throwing at you and all the hell you've been crossing and all the valleys you've been crossing, for whatever reason people cannot explain why this woman and this man is still trusting God. It is grace that does that. Grace has the way to make you like a superman. You can handle tons of struggle, weight of struggle and attacks. But yet, when the devil was expecting you to just collapse, swear, curse God, there is still a song rising with him. Yeah. Why? Because of grace. Yeah. This is so cool. This is awesome. That's why sometimes Christians, we confuse people. They all know what you are facing. Yet you are in tears, all right? And you say, you know, I'll give praise to the Lord. Huh? You just lost your child. You just lost your mother. You just, and you just give praise to who? God. To God. Do you are in tears. You know what can make a man or a woman say that? Grace. Yeah. Is grace what makes you stand faithful to God? When everything else said, curse him. Job could not go through what he went through without grace. His wife did not get it. The, the wife was not to come on. Curse God and just die. This is too much. But there was a grace upon the life of Job. No matter what he went through, grace sustained him. You grow in spirit, even though everything else want you to collapse. Last Monday, I saw grace face to face, my friends. Face to face. I decided to take a flight and go to Montreal to surprise my wife and my kids with my son. Now, watch this. My son cannot sit down five, ten minutes still. Now, I'm about to take a four to five hours flight to go to Montreal and the plane is full, like in this season. Somebody say grace. grace. It's just grace. First of all, we arrive at the airport. I said, this message I preached this Sunday is for me. Lord, you need to start by the preacher first. You need to make grace avail much for me today. Air Canada is delayed three hours. 
Before even we get in the plane, grace has to begin to function. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my God. Grace. Grace unto it. Then now, of course, you are walking in the plane with your son, and everybody's wondering, I hope they are not sitting by me. I really hope they're not sitting by me. I really hope they are sitting far on the other side. I really hope they are not close to my seat. My God, I want to rest today. I really hope you can feel that. And then you know grace is walking. It's like we were in a balloon. You don't see anything. I was not aware of it. Grace is so powerful, it becomes visible. You're going to get this, brothers. Yeah, yeah. When sometimes you are faced in struggle, where there's no human ability, no human whisper, no human wisdom, no human hand, I mean, you are left to yourself not knowing what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. Then you begin to see grace operating. It becomes visible. I sat in that plane. Every minute was like one hour. But grace began to operate. The plane was full. And you can tell everybody's intense on their side. I said, don't worry, grace is going to operate today. We had an amazing four hours after three hours delay flight with my son. And it was wonderful. Why? Because of grace. Grace unto it. There is power in grace to sustain you. I mean, this was amazing. It cannot be a human act. That's where grace comes in. The introduction of grace displayed the inability of man. Grace came because man couldn't save himself. And grace is still available because we are not good enough, we are not strong enough, we are not smart enough, we are not wise enough. We need grace to sustain us in time of need. Hallelujah. Grace operate, brothers. And now coming back, the flight was actually five hours almost instead of four. One extra hour added on. I say, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. You've done it for four hours. You can do it for ten. Because grace has a way to expand. Much grace. Are you hearing me? Is grace open? Is grace open? No matter the size of your inquiry, there is a dimension of grace to sustain you in the midst of it. Hallelujah. Then Air Canada is late, this time one hour and a half. I was relaxed. Because three hours grace came, one hour and a half peanuts. I hear me somebody. And I'm walking around, I'm feeling like, if I can see somebody today that I know, who can just come and give me a hug right now. I'm just feeling that in my spirit. Because it's intense. And suddenly, the delay flight was the flight coming from Calgary landing in Montreal. And who walked out? Pastor Jenny. You know, God, grace can provide where you... Just a high five and a hug and say, Ah! Here is one who understands grace. My daughter, Pastor Jenny, give five to Amadou. Hug Amadou. And then everything cooled down again. We are waiting to embark. Everybody looking at you, feel like, oh my God, I don't want them to sit by me. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want them to sit by me. I said, don't worry, God, is grace is available. Yeah. We walk in the place. We flew four hours and 50 minutes by the power of grace. Everything was phenomenal, awesome, and beautiful. He did amazing. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. Why? Because grace was available. And grace is available to you today. No matter the size of your struggle, there is a portion of grace that is available to sustain you and to prevent you from losing your head. It made you strong in the spirit. Where everybody say give up. You feel like you can't give up. Swear and curse God. You feel like, no, I can't do that. When everybody says, this is over, this is done, this, this person is over. But for whatever reason, you feel strength, you feel bold, you feel sustained. It's like you don't see like other people see. Everybody's worrying for you, but you are wondering, 
why am I still standing? Why haven't still, you know, I still feel like worshiping. I still feel like praising God, even though I'm losing everything. Why? Because grace has made you strong in spirit. Listen to me. In this life, without grace, most of you will be in the psychiatric ward. I tell you the truth. I wonder how grace operates upon the life of Adam so Adam does not kill himself. Let me help you. I spoke to you last time how Adam walked out of the Garden of Eden. God took him out because of love. God didn't take him out as a punishment. God took him out because of love. Because if Adam has eaten the tree of life when he was under the curse of sin, there will be no redemption for him. So the angel with the flaming sword was not to kill him and scare him. It was for his own protection. You get that? Now watch. A man who knew no sin, sinned. The man who grew up with God suddenly is separated from God. In your normal mind, you will kill yourself. Think about it. There is no level of depression that a human being can go through than Adam went through. There's none. Perfect man. And one day, separated from God. That is the depression that will take you down. But yet, Adam did not kill himself. He didn't depress. depress. Why? Grace. Grace can keep you in the right mind. That's why we need grace in these seasons. Let's put back this verse again. In John 2.40. Uh, Luke, Luke 2.40, please. Now look, this one here, you want to keep it, all right? Not only he walked strong in spirit, but he was filled with what? Wisdom. Now listen to me. Wisdom is the highest form of wealth in the earth. Do you understand? Okay. The opposite of wisdom is foolishness. Wisdom is so powerful, so tremendously powerful, that Jesus Christ is called wisdom. So what is wisdom? Is the knowing of God's will, how to deliver it, and when to. Do you see this? There is the knowing of the will of God, the how to deliver it, and when. That what separate wisdom from foolishness. A fool can know the will of God, but has no wisdom to know how and when to deliver. Do you see that? Yeah. In this season, I feel in my spirit, God want to pour upon us wisdom. So we will know his will, even in the business world, in your family. Wisdom work that way. God begin to communicate to you his will and give you the strategy and give you the timing. Somebody say will, strategy, and timing. All those three elements make wisdom. You can sometimes know the will, but no strategy and no timing, you screw up everything. You got to have the strategy, the knowing, and the timing. Praise the Lord. So, let me give you an example of how grace brought wisdom to me with my son. I had toys, different little pieces that I will entertain him as we are traveling. All right? And different pieces and stuff like that. When we are walking in, God begin to communicate me to me his will. And I have a few little candies as well. Now watch. So the will of God said to me, because he's knowing the will, 
Don't use any toys. It doesn't make sense to my mind. How am I going to entertain him for four hours? See, wisdom goes against the odds. How would that be? That is the only way that they taught him. That's the only way we all know that will maintain and entertain him and distract him. But wisdom spoke. And wisdom said, don't use any of those. But wisdom is not finished. Knowing the will of God is not enough. You need a strategy and you need a timing. Are you getting me? Then by grace, wisdom begins to unfold and give more details. And he said this. The candy you have, don't give to him until you fly two hours. And after that, three hours, you give one more. And 30 minutes before you land. And when you land. No toys. No game. Don't give him an iPad. He loves it. Don't give him your cell phone. He loves it. Don't do any of this stuff. Don't give him anything that he can hold on in his hand. It went up against all the strategy of the workers, all the strategy of the professional, all my own strategies. Wisdom will go against everything you know. It is that wisdom that spoke to Peter and said, Peter, you have told the whole night based on human experience and you caught no fish. Let me take you to a higher dimension of wisdom. And in this wisdom, Peter, you're going to fish at a different hour than you ever fished before. And you're going to go in the deep water like you never went before. And you're going to throw the net at a different side you never throw before. Wisdom is powerful. It didn't make sense to my head. But grace empowers you to do the will. Don't miss this. My mind is still debating. But grace empowers me not to do my will, but to do the will of God. Do you get this? Yeah. So even though my mind does not want to do it, because it doesn't make sense to my mind, grace empowers me to still do the will of God. In other words, everything begins with him. If it was up to me, I would have still do what I have planned. Yeah. But grace prevents me from doing it. Yeah. It's, like, it's like grace tied me up to the will of God by fire by force. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I'm trying to make you understand how grace functions. You don't want to miss this, my friend. I want you to see how grace functions. So, even though the will of God is released, don't give him the toys. Don't give him the iPhone. Don't give him the iPad. Don't entertain him. Yet in my mind, that's what we know. That's what we do. That's what he knows. That's what will work. Yet, because of grace, I was not able to do what I wanted to do, but I was empowered to become able to do what God said I should do by wisdom. Do you understand that? At the end of the day, it's really not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. For in him, we walk, we move, and we find our being. He is the one who gives you the power to will and to do. To will and to do. To will and to do. It was impossible for Peter to throw his net on the left side. Because wisdom by grace spoke from the right. Even though it didn't make sense. If you want to throw the left, grace empowers him to throw the right. I have all the toys. I have the iPhone. I have the iPad. I have it all, but I couldn't touch it. It's crazy. Friends, this is crazy. This grace we're talking about 
It's like love. It controls you. It takes over you. Sometimes they ask you, how oh, did you get born again? I don't even know why I lift up my hand. I just walk in the front. I find myself in the front of the altar. Grace carry you there. Grace carry you there. Great lift up your hands. Great push you there. Great make you walk in a dimension of faith that you will have never reached by yourself. Grace is like a vehicle. It carries you. Strategy was given. I acted through. It was amazing. When we landed, I was, uh, we didn't use the iPad. We didn't use the iPhone. We didn't use the toy. I still have the toys in the box today as I speak to you. I didn't even open it. It's still brand new from Walmart. Grace is powerful. It empowers you to do what wisdom says. Wisdom gives will, it gives strategy, and it makes you step out. So all the glory is God. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. Is somebody getting me? Yeah. Hallelujah. It gives you wisdom. And sometimes it goes against everything you ever knew in your life. It does not make sense to your experiences, to your education. To the opinion of people. That's the dimension God is taking us to. Just walk in. Walk in. Last one. And then I'll wrap it up and let you go so we can meet tonight. Here's something else. I see Grace doing that so wonderful. Two verses. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 and 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Let's start 9, 8. Can we read that one together, please, brothers and sisters? One, two, three. God is able... To make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Somebody say good work. Now let's project now 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Let's read together. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I what? Labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. You know the grace of God make you produce more than others. People think the grace of God is to justify your laziness. No, 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 no. The grace of God make you a super machine. I mean producing machine. You understand what I'm talking about? When other people are walking tired, you're still running and you're not, you're not getting tired. Are you hearing me? When other people, oh, this is too much, the economy, nothing works, you say, let, let it go. You guys, you guys sit down and justify all the economy is. Me, I have grace, I'm producing. Are you hearing me? When they want to give up, you still feel like I'm just starting. Why? Because grace makes you labor more abundantly, more abundantly. Grace increases productivity. Grace gives you ability to run. Grace gives you ability to achieve. Ability to perform and to bring things to fulfillment. Grace is powerful. Grace is not just uh, make you lazy and just give you stuff. No, 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 no. Grace gives you power. You run and you're not growing weary. Amen. When everybody feels like I need water to drink, you say, I'm not thirsty yet. What do you mean? We've been running for a few hours. You're not thirsty. No. Why? Grace. Grace makes you run and not grow weary. It makes you do more. You work eight, nine, ten hours. Other people will have lost their head and just give up. But you are on a mission because God wants to fulfill a dream. You will run with the vision and not get tired. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Grace makes you not waste time. And grace is so powerful, it will take you away from some people who are time wasters. Okay, all right, leave that one alone. You didn't catch me. You understand? There are some people who are just in your life to waste your life because they have no grace functioning in their life. And therefore, they are always giving excuses, pity parties, negativity, this will not work. They, I mean, the, no faith talk, no nothing. Nothing good is said before them. And grace come and said, son, my daughter, leave that place now. Zzz. 
Why? What is going on? We are not even communicating. I feel cold. There is a cold between us. Leave it alone. Sometimes it's God working through grace to bring that cold so he can separate you and move you from a place of non-productivity to productivity. So let them go in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Because some people just waste your time. So grace has no time to waste. Grace, when I achieve things, Christ is coming soon. Purpose has to be fulfilled. Dream has to be achieved. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And so there are some people who are just suckers, all right, who are just there like blood suckers. They are just like, you know, how do you call this thing that sucks the blood? Leeches. Leeches, uh-huh. Just everywhere on you, they only take and only take and only take. They never give. They only take and only take and only take. They never give. At the end of the day, God said, hey, I have a mission for you. There is a vision to fulfill. There is a planting church. There is a business to rise. There is a project to fulfill. There is some book to be written. There are some orphanages. Leave these people alone. Grace moves you. Grace empowers you. And grace make you achieve. That's what Paul said. I, I spend half of my life in prison, but yet I produce more. <laughs> Paul said, they beat me up, they persecute me more than these people. But look at what grace does. Grace, for the few hours I have out of jail, <laughs> grace make me labor. More. Somebody say more. more. No, say it really. More. more. Abundantly. Okay, can we say more abundantly? Grace does not make you just make it. Grace doesn't make you just make it. Grace makes you make it with a style. More abundantly. Grace doesn't make you win the game with one goal. Understand? We just score one last goal. We won by 3-2 or 1-0. No, no, no. Grace gives you a flawless victory. It makes you win so good that even if your enemies were trying to catch you up, there's no time left for them to catch up because you have put a distance between them. It is the more abundantly than all. Do you get this? Than yeah. all. Grace distinguishes you. Grace set you apart. Grace make you a winner in the midst of everyone who's losing. Grace make you a champion in the midst of champions. It does not make you just make it. It makes you the head. That's what the scripture said. You are not the tail. You are what? The head. You are not the nose. You are the head. You are not the chest. You are the head. Grace gives you victory properly. Proper victory. Not almost by the tail there. No, 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 no. Fully. More abundantly. You know when you understand that, you will begin to labor Knowing that grace is empowering you to achieve. Grace is empowering me to dream. Grace is empowering me to see vision. Grace empowering me to rise up, to have strategy, to act on what God showed me. Grace is available. Amen. Esther, chapter 2, verse 17. Stand up on your feet as we read this one together. It is by grace that we are here as a church. Do you realize that? No, do you know that? It is by grace. It is not by mind, not by power or human being ability. It, this is just grace. It's grace ability. It's grace ability. Let's read together. One, two, three. And the king loved Esther above all women, and she obtained grace and favor in the sight more than all so that she set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead. Now, I want you to notice three things here, and the English language, you can help me out there. It said, uh -huh. the king loved her above all the women. In other words, among all the women, grace distinguished her. Did you see that? Yeah. All right. Now, you keep reading, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than, so we have the above all, and then more than all, above all, and more than all, and then we keep reading, then he set her royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of, see, we have above all, more than, instead of, 
Am I getting good in English today? <laughs> all right. See, I want you to get this. So can we see this word? We have above all, above all, more than all, and instead of. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Above all, more than all, instead of. That's what grace does. Instead of the other person to get the job, above all those who apply, grace pick you up. Are you getting this thing? Above all, instead of. Instead of, in other words, these people in a normal, natural perspective, they qualify more than you. They were more beautiful women than Esther. I'm telling you, top notch. Esther could not even get to the knees. If you look at the natural presentation and credential and, and beauty, Esther doesn't come close. But there was something that made the difference. Hallelujah. It was what? Grace. Grace came upon her and therefore she went above all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like above all is coming for somebody this morning. Hallelujah. Instead of. Instead of him, they choose her. Meaning, Vashti, top gun. But yet, because of grace, instead of the top gun, they chose the gracing one. Do you see what I'm talking about? Have you ever known why Mary was chosen? Because of what? Yeah. I mean, how many virgin was in the land? Millions. But yet, above all, instead of more than all, Mary was visited. I pray somebody visited you today. I pray somebody visit you today. I say, I pray somebody visit you. You see, grace is not fair. Grace is not fair. I say, grace is not fair. It is not fair. Grace is unfair. I mean, did you see the pile of resume? Did you see the pile of resume? Three doctorate, five doctorate, 25 years experience, and you just show up kunta kunte, and Grace said, don't take this one. Among the 1,000, pick up the 987. Pull it out. Why is he doing that? Grace is empowering for you to come on the top. I've prophesied that for somebody today. That in this end year, grace will distinguish you. I said grace shall distinguish you. Hallelujah. Oh, I love my grace. Thank you for grace. Grace is my makeup. Glory to God. Grace is my beautifying. Praise to God. Grace is my strength. Praise to God. Grace is my wisdom. Praise to God. Grace is favor. Praise to God. Grace is provider. Praise to God. Grace shall distinguish you. I mean, years ago, there was a hunk in our church. You know what a hunk? That means the guy is good looking. The guy is anointed. The guy is loaded. The guy is smart. Are you hearing me? And of course, <laughs> I have to put in the past just to protect the eyes not looking around, all right? And of course, you can tell all the women going, oh my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. At last, you have heard my prayer. <laughs> now he has arrived. Yeah. I even saw him in a dream. Mm -hmm. He was a little bit light skinned like this, big watch. Ah, praise God. You know what? There was a woman. <laughs> she doesn't even talk. She, she doesn't know how to have a show. Hmm? Grace begins to operate. And this guy loved this girl. I wonder, he said, seriously, of all the mighty, fabulous, amazing, great, phenomenal, awesome, beautiful, smart, anointed, great, why you pick this girl? And God said, that's what my grace does. Yeah. Above all, more than all, instead of grace, deliver. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. You see, brothers, when you understand that, you chill out. Yeah. Years ago, I went to repair my car. That was years ago. And uh, <laughs> grace is powerful. 
I was broke, really, really broke. And uh, the guy came out of the car, he said, it will take $4,300 to repair. I said, huh? This car, I didn't even buy it at that price. <laughs> and uh, we're supposed to go for the first trip my family and I we ever had. And I, I was so excited. Uh, you know, God has blessed us through the church. We're so blessed and so excited. We're going to drive to Spokane. We're going to go to Boise, just in tent and, and sleep on the road. You know, this is excitement. And now we go to double check the car, and the guy say 4300 to repair. And they call me. They say, you know, we, do you want we continue with the repair? It's going to cost 4300 I say, leave it alone. <laughs> then I begin to drive to the garage, and I, I had a faith. This faith was so powerful. I told my wife, baby, don't worry. We're going to drive this car. I'm going to lay that. Yeah. Jesus is the mechanic. I'm going to lay my hand on this car. <laughs> and every engine oil or whatever is broken, mechanic Jesus will repair this. Amen. We will drive it and nothing will happen. You watch. She looked at me. She's like, are you okay? I say, yeah. Jesus is a mechanic. He will repair this car today. Zero. So I walk in there. And this elderly man, he was from uh, India or Pakistan with a bundle on his head. I can tell he's a Muslim, all right? So he came, and he was just walking in. I didn't know he's the owner. And he take my face, say, uh, you're here to pick up which car? I said, this other car. What's your name? He like, okay. Oh, okay. So the car is still in. I said, no, no, I'm here to pick it up. He said, but it's not finished. I said, no, 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 it's, it's too expensive. And he looked at my name and he said, El Hajj. I said, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you know that's the time where you feel like, yeah, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Woo! The guy goes, oh, El Hajj. Yeah, El Hajj. You've been to the Mecca. Oh, El Hajj. And he said, so I said, no, it's too much. He said, what do you do? I say, I'm a pastor. Grace empower you not to lie, even when you think lie will help you. Hey! <laughs> I mean, this was the good moment to say, yeah, you know, assalamu alaikum, we'll say a few verses. <laughs> to the glory of God. <laughs> but I found myself saying, no, I'm a pastor. Can you imagine now the guy will get angry? If like El Hajj pastor? Really, pick up your car and go. <laughs> and I say, yeah, I'm a pastor. He said, El Hajj pastor? I say, yeah, I was a Muslim and I converted. Huh? You see what grace does? Yeah. Grace goes against the odds. Nobody will say that in his rightful mind because you know you are destroying favor. Not knowing there's no favor without grace. And suddenly the guy said, oh, okay. He picked up the phone and called in the garage and spoke to them. And he told me, sit down. They will repair the car. I said, no, but I don't have the money. He said, don't worry. You are a servant of God. I will do that for yeah, you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, somebody? When you have grace, you don't need to lie and manipulate. You walk in that interview and you tell them, hey, that's the way it is. What you're hearing, that's what you get. And grace has power to bring favor beyond your curriculum vitae and your resume and to deliver the goods. I pray grace deliver the goods for you. I pray the grace of God deliver the goods. I walk, I sit down for two hours, I take my car all fixed for $4,300, pay no money. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Grace is a provider. Grace is a sustainer. Grace is a favor. Grace will uplift you. Grace will open the way for you. Grace will give you the job you don't deserve. Grace will give you the wife you don't deserve. Grace will give you the husband you don't deserve. Grace will put you in the right place you don't deserve. Just because of grace, period. Hold somebody's hand as we pray grace. Musicians, come here, musician. Begin to play something. I want we release grace upon one another. I don't want it to come from me. It is in you. I want you to release it upon the other person. Because in this season and where we are going, we can do it on our own. The vision is too big. 
your projects are too big, your dreams are too big for you, your ideas are too big for you, the mountains are too great, the mountains are too big, the obstacles are too big, the overwhelmness is too much. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But there is grace available. And all we need it is that grace. Because that grace has the solution. That grace has the power. It has the wisdom. It has the strategy. And it has the power to make you do, hallelujah, the will of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing your Alpha and Omega to warm up and then we begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Your Alpha and Omega. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And there is none beside him.